Last night, I took a roll of the dice and I saw Game Night. Was it good? I probably should have thought that through better. Welcome to Thumb Together. My name is Andrew Fantasia and we are talking about Game Night Together. As always, if you enjoy this video, Maybe like and subscribe to my channel so I can keep making more delicious, saucy videos for you all to enjoy and talk about the movies that we all either like or dislike together. So is Game Night a movie we liked or a movie we disliked? I think it was a pretty damn good movie. I've said before in my 2018 preview video that good comedies are increasingly harder and harder to come by and that I, I actually had some trouble thinking of the last time a comedy really wowed me. Game Night did not wow me, but it was better than I thought it was going to be. It was a, a very fun film, uh, and like I've said, I am, I'm, I'm a big fan of this theme. I mean, my buddies and I, we get together, we sit at that table that's right behind me right now. We get together, we play a lot of board games. We, we like that, you know, we play some crazy shit on that table. So the idea of, of friends who come together and, and play a lot of games was, uh, in my mind, that was like a recipe for gold. I was, I was on board. I was like, yeah, let's do it. Jason Bateman and Rachel McAdams are the main characters in this movie. Uh, we see at the beginning of the film how they meet, and it's very cute. They are just two people who are super competitive and they just, playing games is their forte. And over the years they have become, you know, the, the that couple that we all know who always hosts game night. They have a group of, you know, a small group of friends who always come over and play games with them. They did a great job with these two characters, Max and Annie. They were just an awesome couple. They were they were so cute together and they are just like that couple that you want to be friends with. They, they gave them you know, a lot to do in this movie in regards to just like playing off each other. Sort of the, the catalyst that sort of sparks everything in this film is that they're trying to get pregnant, but they can't. And the reason being, the doctor tells them, is that Max, his sperm count is not amazing because uh, it, it's being hindered by his own stress, his own problems, uh, and they are keeping him from being virile. They end up finding out that it, it, it comes from his brother, uh, who is played by Kyle Chandler. And Kyle Chandler is his older brother, who is more successful than him in every way, taller, more handsome, uh, better job. And it, it, it's just a constant competition between Max and his brother, Brooks. And that's where we get our plot. Like I said, every weekend, these guys host a game night, they get together and they just play like Scrabble or Monopoly or something at their house. One weekend, Brooks calls because he usually lives in another city. He calls and he says, I'm in town, let me come over. And he starts trying to integrate himself into game night. And when Brooks decides to throw his own game night, that's where shit gets real. Uh, because and we, we saw all this in the trailers. Brooks uh, tries to set up a, a murder mystery game night that goes horribly wrong. Because while he was supposed to be fake kidnapped for this game night, he ends up being kidnapped for real by real gangsters. The group is, you know, amused at first because they're like, oh, wow, you know, there's, he's, he's putting up a really good fight. This looks real. And then all of a sudden they are, you know, chasing real kidnappers across town with real bullets being fired at them. There have been a lot of comedies like this of late. I mean, we had Date Night with Steve Carell and Tina Fey a couple years back. Uh, there was a Scarlett Johansson movie called Rough Night that was kind of similar. We can sense the theme going on. I saw Date Night, didn't love it. I didn't see Rough Night, but this was, I'm assuming, the best of the three. They're friends, uh, the side characters who, who, are, who make up this group of people. They were really interesting. There's two other couples, um, and one couple, of, there, there's, a, there's a guy, a young guy, who keeps bringing just the worst dates to these game nights. You know, he, he he never has a steady girlfriend. He just keeps finding random girls and they're all like gorgeous but horribly ditzy girls that he keeps bringing. And just the way they interact with the group was, for the short time we saw them, was hilarious. And then finally for this big game night, he ends up bringing a woman who is actually very intelligent and possibly good for him as a significant other. So that was, that was a kind of cool little thing. And then you have the other couple who I really liked, and they had their own plot going, which I'll, I'll say for spoilers, because I want to touch on that later, but 
I liked them too. I thought all three couples had like a cool dynamic to them, but Max and Annie were the strongest just simply because I guess they were the main characters, so we were constantly focusing on them. I don't remember who directed this. I think it was the same guys who directed the Vacation movie uh, and Horrible Bosses. There were a lot of interesting directing choices in here that I think need to be talked about because there was a lot of cool moments, blink and you miss it kind of moments, but there's moments in here where they try to even make certain shots look like a game. And what I mean by that is uh, every once in a while you'll have an establishing shot of like let's say their neighborhood, the neighborhood where the, these two main characters live. And the establishing shot is like a miniature model of a neighborhood. As if I was like some tabletop Warhammer gamer and I built a model of a neighborhood to like stage my my board. Uh, and you know they it was clearly a model because I'm looking at them like it's a very good model, but that, that looks like when you walk into a real estate office and they have just, you know, a, a modeled neighborhood. And once he zooms in and then cuts away, then it becomes a real neighborhood. And I was like, that's interesting. You know, that, that that's, that's something that I wouldn't have seen coming. And then uh, there's a car chase scene later on. And there are a few shots. Uh, Rachel McAdams is driving this car and there's a few shots where the camera is positioned behind the car and slightly above it in such a way that it looks exactly like Grand Theft Auto, like the video game. It looks like you're you're watching a big screen version of the video game, just like the way the camera is placed, it is precisely like that. There there were little little moments like that that really made it, you know, interesting and I was like, I wonder if they'll go further with this, but they didn't. And I was kind of I thought it was kind of a drag that they didn't. Um and there was one big moment that really impressed me directorial wise uh if any if there's any true detective fans out there if you remember that part of true detective where matthew mcconaughey is in a, a, a ghetto during a shootout and he is you know hauling somebody with him over his shoulder throughout this ghetto up to and including them like hopping fences and stuff and it's all done in one very long take there's a scene like that in game night it's not as long as true detective but it was impressive man and I don't know how they did it, but they did it. And it looked pretty wild. I will save that for spoilers as well, because that that's uh, that kind of goes into the plot. I'd be remiss if I did not bring up Jesse Plemons. He plays the next door neighbor, and he might well be the greatest character in this movie. He used to be married, and him and his wife would be part of the groups on game night. They would come over and join the group for all the game nights. But the thing is, is his wife was the one that the main characters were friends with. And now she has divorced him. So she's left, she's moved away, and now it's just him living next to them. And he wants to still be part of game night, but they don't really like him. <laughs> and so it's this constant struggle of just trying to avoid him every time they have a game night. And that alone, that's like some of the funniest stuff in this whole movie. And every time he's on screen... He is so awkward and deadpan and just creepy as hell. People like were in stitches in the theater every time just he opens his mouth. I think the standout for this movie for me was Rachel McAdams. Her, her character was just so adorable, so much fun. Uh, there's there's a moment where you know she she's she thinks she's playing this game. She does not know it's real yet, and she, she's in a bar. She's got a gun that she confiscated that she thinks is fake. And there are three kidnappers, gangsters, that she thinks are actors. And the way she is, you know, acting towards these people, because she's like, Ooh, I got you now. Get on the ground. And she's so, like, flipping about it. And she's holding this gun. She's like, oh, I'm going to get you. I'm going to shoot you in the head. And, you know, the whole time we're sitting there, like, that's a real freaking gun. Be careful. And these are real gangsters on the floor just looking up at her in, like, horror you know just looking at it from their point of view this woman is freaking insane and rachel plays it so well that bar scene i could watch over and over <laughs> she was just so casual with it and a lot of the greatest parts of this movie come from when the the characters believe what's happening is fake <laughs> and it turns out it's real uh like there's a, a point where somebody gets shot and they, they, you know, everybody believes that it's all staged. So Jason Bateman, <laughs> I'm 
laughing just thinking about it. Jason Bateman is standing around and going like, oh, gee, oh, he shot him. That's that's not good at all. You know, they, they always react wrong. When real stuff is happening, they're, they think they're having fun. And when, uh, when there's something fake happening, they overreact. And it's just priceless. They, they really did that whole thing well. I like when, when movies get creative with either their opening credits or their closing credits. And this movie really got creative with its closing credits. Um, the closing credits kind of do a reveal of something. They, they reveal one aspect of what one character was doing the whole time. And it was pretty damn funny. To see the movie, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. I just wish that they had, pardon the pun here, played with the theme more. And here's what I mean by that. This group doesn't just play one game. You know, they're not like... It's always Monopoly every week or something. They play, you know, they got Monopoly, they got Scrabble, they got the Game of Life, they got Charades, they got, you know, Pictionary. There's a lot of games that they play as a group. And there are moments in the plot, you know, it's life or death. There's drug dealers and kidnappers shooting at them. And there's moments where it looked like they were going to incorporate some of their skill at gaming into the situation and it only ever ended up happening once. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the spoilers up now to talk about that scene. It, it, it's a very small scene and it's not even a huge spoiler. So if you wanna hear it, by all means stick around, but I'll, I'll start the spoiler section now. There's a scene towards the end of the movie where they are, um, you know, there, there's a man with a gun and he is looking around uh, trying to find Rachel McAdams and she's hiding behind something. And Jason Bateman can see her and he's trying to tell her what to do. He's trying to, you know, tell her to do something to take care of this gunman who's after her. But he obviously can't yell out, like, honey, do this, because then the gunman will hear her. You know, he's like waving his hands and she, you know, she whispers, like, do charades. Because we've seen in the movie that they play charades a lot. So he's like, okay, I'm going to tell you what to do to this guy to, to, to get him. But I can't say it, so I'm going to charade it. So he's like, you know, three words. First word, do this. And I thought that was a lot of fun. And that was exactly what I wanted to see in this kind of movie. But that's the only time in the movie where they do this kind of thing. And I really wish that it had been more of that. Because that would have been amazing. If, if this adventure that they go on is interspersed with all these other little kinds of games. That would have rocked my world, baby. That would have just... I would have been like... I'm buying this movie today. I'm going to sit in front of Best Buy and wait for the DVD to come out. But they missed a lot of those opportunities. In terms of what I was talking about earlier regarding a directorial piece of finery, there's a point in the movie where they're trying to recover a Fabergé egg that one of the gangsters wants. And they go sneak into this very opulent mansion. And they find the egg. And as soon as they find it, gangsters in this mansion start chasing after them. And, you know, shooting after them with guns and stuff. Uh, but nobody wants the egg to break, obviously. So what we get is a one-shot take where our six main characters are running around a mansion with a Fabergé egg playing keep away from these gangsters. There'll, there'll be moments where Jason Bateman is running and you know he's running through this room and he goes like from a dining room into a library and it follows him and he's holding the egg like a football and there's these guys chasing after him ready to like tackle him and then the camera pans up and Rachel McAdams is on like a, a, a balcony on the second floor and she's like honey throw it to me and he'll throw it up to her and she'll catch it and she'll start running and it keeps going on and on through this ginormous house and I was so impressed by this. I was like, holy cow, like, where is the camera? Like, there was one part where the camera went from the first floor to the second floor in a very cramped environment. And I was like, where is that cameraman standing? This is insanity. Is this a real house or is this, like, you know, a, a pull-apart house? Because if that was a real house, then they deserve a, you know, like a round of applause, standing ovation. Because that was some crazy directing that just happened there and you know they're playing this game of keep away for a long time and it, it was it, it was fun to watch I, I wish it had gone on longer uh but obviously that was probably technically exhausting 
to make. I wanted to touch on one of the couples. One of the couples is played by two actors I've never seen before. Their names are Lamorne Morris and Kylie Bunbury. Kylie Bunbury is actually a Canadian lady, so hello, Kylie. They're, this couple, they have this really, really funny running joke throughout the movie where uh, earlier in the in the film, they are playing a drinking game. They're playing Never Have I Never. And one of the characters randomly says, "Never, I have never slept with a celebrity. And she, th this girl, Kylie Bunbury's character, takes a shot indicating that she has slept with a celebrity. Uh, but it's already been clearly established that she and her husband have been sweethearts since middle school. So now her husband is like, you slept, you had sex with a celebrity, but we've been together since we were kids. And it starts driving him insane. And he keeps trying to guess, like, who did you sleep with? Who was it? And she's like, don't worry, like, it, it was nobody. It was, you know, one, we were taking a break once, whatever. And that was funny. I was really digging that. Like, I was like, oh my God, like, who's this going to be? I was sure that whoever it was was going to end up having a cameo in the movie. I was like, okay, if it's, you know, if she ends up saying I slept with, I don't know, like Hulk Hogan, Hulk Hogan would have a cameo. Like, I was just expecting that to happen. What ended up happening with that joke was it really just went absolutely nowhere. And it didn't even end on a funny note. Essentially, she, she you know, she says uh, that it was Denzel Washington. So Kylie Bunbury tells the story of how she met Denzel at a gas station and... They went out together and then she went back to his place and she slept with him and she shows a picture that she had saved and he looks at the picture and he's like, that's not Denzel. That's a guy who looks an awful lot like Denzel, but that's not Denzel Washington. That is kind of funny that she thinks she slept with Denzel, but she just slept with some random dude. That would have been funny if they played it up more and she was like, oh my God, who was that guy? But once that scene ends, they just kind of look at this picture and they're like, oh, that's not Denzel and they have a good laugh about it and that's it. And I thought that was pretty weak, man. Like, come on. You know, they, they've been building up the joke, and I liked the character. For the whole movie, he's stressing about who it is. And I thought, once they revealed that it wasn't really Denzel, I thought, that's funny. Now she's going to stress, be like, who the hell did I sleep with? But that didn't end up being the case. Instead, they were just like, oh, I was wrong. It wasn't Denzel. Ha <laughs> ha. Moving on. Everything's fine. And that was just, ugh, that really fell flat for me. I was... Not happy with how that turned out. Other than that, I really liked the twists and turns the story took. One might assume that, you know, because Kyle Chandler has this game where it's a fake kidnapping and fake murder, and then he actually does get kidnapped, one might assume that it's, you know, a triple bluff kind of thing and that it all is a fake kidnapping. And there are points where they make you think that, and there are points where it almost goes in that direction, and then there are points where it turns around again so whether you want it to be fake or whether you want it to be real you're going to be satisfied with that at the end of it all they save brooks and by saving his older brother max realizes that you know his, his older brother isn't all he's cracked up to be he's not this successful suave dashing man he is kind of a loser and i i have a much better life than him and i love my wife and i'm very happy and i'm i don't have to constantly be comparing myself to my big bro. He gets Rachel pregnant and there everybody's happy in the end. And it, it was a nice little nice little wrap up of the film. I think they they did a good job with that and the very ending they they leave you thinking like something's going to happen. You're like is is this going to happen now? And for the final shot when they pan out they show it happening and you're like okay that that's funny <laughs> that's pretty funny so i'll leave it at that i'll let you see game night because i think it is worth watching it's not amazing but it is one of the better comedies i've seen in a little while and i love the source material i just wish i wish they had done more of it that charades stuff was perfect i can't stress enough how much i wish they had done more and there are already talks of a game night too if that's the case, I really hope that they take that to heart. So that has been Game Night. That has been Thumb Together. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you here next time. Until then, hey, maybe go play some board games or something. Just don't shoot anybody. That would be bad.